is Ed Hubs Airbrushing, brought to you by Custom Shop. Welcome to the world of airbrushing, where a steady hand and keen eye can take you a long way. This art form can be one of the most rewarding, but without the right steps, it can be downright frustrating. Ed has been airbrushing for over 30 years, teaching millions, and at the same time, turning out some pretty sick work. But this is where we leave it up to you. Take what you can from these videos and run with it. Hey guys, this is Ed Hudson, Full Blown Customs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This channel is dedicated to airbrushing, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or pro. So grab your airbrush and let's get going. Mike from Show and Shine has based out this Jeep and brought it to us. Now he's based it out in Chameleon. From that point, I've taken and laid out the flames. Then I've sprayed down a black base, sprayed another color of Chameleon back over top of it, leaving the black flames exposed at the tips. Now I'm going to take some of my white mixture and I'm going to create what is called a twisted flame. Now what a twisted flame is, is it's going to start from the front here and we're going to make it roll and twist in and out of all these other flames. Then I'm going to take a blue candy and go back over the top of that. Let's get started. All right, we got our stencil pattern ready to go, and I got my chameleon mixed up. It's the same chameleon I've already sprayed down here, but what I'm going to do is just do a couple highlights. So when we put our next color on top, this looks like it's layered way back under it. It's going to be hard to see, but out in the sunlight, this will really stand out. I've said this many times in many of my videos. You have to do this in layers. If you try to do this all in one pass, you're going to get a big blob. This is just going to be the lower base pattern for when we unmask these flames. Then we're going to do another set of flames on top of it so these will look like they're back underneath. So then we're going to twist and roll these, the next set of flames, underneath this flame and back over top of it. It's a little complicated right now as I'm talking, but you'll see as I go. Depending on what angle you look at, this turns from purple to blue to green. It's a really cool effect. As you notice, I'll put my stencil right here and I'll just hit the top of it. And what that does is it leaves a bright spot there using the existing color underneath it, leaving that like your dark shadow area. And you can see how I kind of connected the two. We just kind of shadow it in here and there. And it connects them and fills them in. It makes a nice twisting motion. Let me show you something here. What I got going is I'm going to lay out my pattern to begin with like this right here. And what this does is this gives me a guideline to what I'm going to start doing with my stencil work and where my flame is starting to go. It's basically like a backbone to your, to your flame. So now we'll take our stencil, nice little spot right there to just hit it right on the tip. Don't go all the way around the edge, just create a hot spot right there. You can see how it makes it look like it's nice and twisted. Do the same thing there and then we'll roll it around one more time. Right there. Since this is really hard to see as I'm going here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of speed it up here and finish out airbrushing this. Now this is just an underlayment to the actual flame I'm going to put on top. You'll still be able to see this back underneath it, but we're just going to kind of repeat the same process all the way across the top of the hood here, down the fenders. Then we're going to unmask it and start in with a white, well it's actually a gray white. And uh, I'll start airbrushing that and I'll explain it a little bit more as we go. Ted had to come in and check out his Jeep. What do you think? That's cool. <laughs> Gets a little tricky once in a while. You have to change up angles as you're airbrushing. You can see it in one direction, but you move, you can't even see it. So you got to keep positioning yourself doing this chameleon. 
Now the fun part begins, we've got Mike here, he's going to go ahead and help me unmask this. We've already got the flames laid out, did the first set of realistic flames, got them all nice and twisted. Now we're really going to get twisted on the second set. Let's get her unmasked. Really nice ghost effect we got going here. Now, by doing this with chameleon on top of chameleon, it gives you that ghost effect as far as a flame design. Now, when we do the next set of realistic flames, they're actually gonna be a little bit brighter and they're gonna be twisted, rolled around the flames. This is a really important step to remember after you're done doing your flames. You'll have a little bit of edge here and there from um, paint buildup. Just make sure your hands are really clean. Go back in, clean that edge off. Let me take a second here and explain what I'm doing. We've already sprayed our flames, now I'm taking my fine line and I'm masking the flame pocket itself off. Now why I'm doing that is I'm gonna take our gray mixture after this right here is already masked off, we'll paper it off right here and then I'm gonna take our gray mixture and start spraying a realistic flame like it's coming out from underneath the flame that's already taped out. And then when it comes up here, we're gonna kind of unmask everything and then we're gonna make the flame twist back and forth underneath and over top of this other flame. Got everything all masked off right now. Got my light gray mixture mixed up. Now we're gonna start going from right here and I'm just gonna kind of do the flames out the bat in here. Now what that's gonna do is allow me to unmask this and then start taking them underneath the other flames and then I'll twist them and roll them back and forth around the other flame. But I wanna keep this mask off because I don't want it to get on our existing flame. We'll just start out mapping it out like we always do. So we're going to spray our blue candy back over this in a little bit. So we switch up stencils, what I'm going to do is, the reason I switched up is this one fit right in here for that, but if I try to fit it in here, it doesn't fit for that particular spot. So I use a different style right here, go back in, and I just spray right on the end of it. What that does is it creates that flame to look like it's kind of rolling. And then I just go around the edge like this. Gives it a nice 3D effect. And we'll just kind of connect it back up over here. As we go, we're not really worrying about our lines being really crisp and smooth. Kind of want them a little bit jagged here and there. Just highlight here and there like I just did. So when we spray our blue candy over, the brighter spot on the, on the white right here, or actually the light gray, what it'll do is it'll pop it up even brighter with our um, blue. What I just did here is I highlighted the top of this and actually created it where it's going to look like it's going back under this flame where I got it taped off. Now there's another pocket right here where this flame lit con continues going out. This is going to come back up under this pocket and then twist around this other flame. I know it's very confusing when I'm speaking. I can't even keep up with myself sometimes. So just kind of follow what I'm doing here. It'll all explain itself as we go. Start out with a fog pattern, and then we'll just create our hard lines. Now what I want it to do is I want this to come up and come back to this line here so it looks like it goes under. That's what we're trying to create. Got our electric blue candy all mixed up, ready to go. Now I've already sprayed out my gray pattern here, and I'm gonna spray the um, blue candy back on top of it, and I'll show you what that does. Now I'm gonna stay right on the same pattern. I don't wanna veer off of it too much. 